The days are getting shorter, the nights are getting longer and colder, so it's time to create a little bit of light with a three-armed candelabra. I'm going to start our project with three pieces of 3 8 round bar, roughly 10 millimeter round bar. These are cut 24 inches long, so it's roughly 610 millimeters long. Exact dimensions don't matter. First step, I want to flatten the end where the candle cup is going to go so I've got something to rivet to. Then I won't have to worry about that once I've assembled the arms. I'm going to go ahead and drill these for a quarter inch rivet while they're still flat. It'll be much easier now. We may have to clean up the hole before we do the final assembly, but it'll still be easier. A quick tack weld with a MIG welder will help hold these together while we forge weld it and that way we can do a nice basket twist.
Frequently you ask what kind of flux I'm using when I'm forge welding. Sometimes it's just borax. Today I'm using Iron Mountain flux. Something like Easy Weld is a good choice. And these commercial fluxes are available from today's sponsor, who just happens to be Blacksmith Supply. Besides selling things like welding flux, Blacksmith Supply also carries wire brushes, both the heavy block brushes for really hard scale, and these casting brushes that get down into deep crevices. The Carolina Kevlar hot mill gloves that I like to use in the shop are available for Blacksmith Supply, as are a variety of tongs, hammers, and pretty much everything you need for blacksmithing, from anvils to fly presses to treadle hammers, all these smaller tools, they have books, they have some tool steels for the knife makers. Whether you're trying to equip a new shop as you get started in the craft of blacksmithing, or if you're just looking for the supplies that you need to keep an existing shop running, Blacksmith Supply can probably help you out. And with the holiday season coming up, Blacksmith Supply is a great place to buy gifts for the blacksmith. So use the link in the discount code in the video description. Let's get back to our project. Now for the candle cups and the drip pans, I'm gonna cut those out of 16 gauge sheet metal. I wanna start by making a pattern for the candle cup. This is something I usually just make a paper pattern of, make the ones I need, and then the next time I make another paper pattern. This time I'm doing the paper pattern to a piece of eighth inch sheet metal, and that's going to become a permanent pattern I can hang on the wall. At least it'll be a permanent pattern for these inch and a quarter candles I plan to use on this project. Some different size candle, I'll make a different pattern. Now there are lots of different ways you can cut sheet metal out for a project like this. I like using the Beverly shear. It's simple, it's manual. You don't have to have any electric power to run the thing. It'll cut a curve, just needs a little cleanup with a file or the grinder. If you don't have something like a Beverly shear, you can do all of this with a cold chisel. Blacksmiths have been cutting sheet metal with cold chisels for thousands of years, probably. And it's probably the most affordable way to go. Probably not 50 cents worth of material in making a simple cold chisel, and you're good to go for years. And then you can do this either with a hand hammer at the anvil, or you can do it under a treadle hammer if you have a treadle hammer available. Either hold the chisel in a pair of tongs, or under the inline treadle hammer, I have a stop set up so I won't squish my fingers if the chisel kicks out on me, and that does happen from time to time. You could also nibble around the edges with a hacksaw and then just clean it up with a file. That's a possibility that would be cheap and easily available. Most of us probably have a hacksaw and a file in our shops. Porta band will work. And of course, if you own a plasma cutter, you can cut these out with a plasma cutter. The only time the technique you use to cut something like this really matters is when that technique shows in the finished project. Then you may want a telltale sign of whatever that technique was. Generally, that means you're going to chisel cut it so you get that bevel and the little facets that happen with a chisel cut. But if you're going to file or grind all that off anyways, it really doesn't matter how you do these. And if you're going to do a bunch of them, you could have them CNC cut by somebody and just order a hundred of them at a time. Another option for cutting out those discs would be to just use a hole saw. One problem with that though is the pilot bit on all the hole saws I have anyways is larger than I want the rivet in this candle holder to be. So I'd end up with a great big hole that I don't really want. Now for the piece that will actually become the candle holder itself, you can use all of these same techniques except of course for the hole saw. First, I'm going to rough these out with the Beverly shear and the hacksaw, then clean them up with a file, and we'll be ready to go. Knock the burrs off the holes and we're ready to go ahead and give these things some shape.
And you just need to fuss around with that until you're happy with it. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's put the candle cups on there. First, I'll take a moment to clean up any of these holes that may have been deformed. Well, apparently we're not done tweaking everything here. That's just the way projects like this so often go. Same process for all three arms. Now this is essentially assembled. You could use it the way it is, but anybody that's paying attention remembers that we put some weld in here so that we could do the basket twist without all these bars slipping around in the vise. I don't want that weld to show. I thought about forge welding it and forge welding all that in, but that would make this skinny, and I think aesthetically that would look really bad. So my solution is going to be to hide this with a wrapped collar. So we're going to use a piece of round bar or heavy wire that's roughly 3 16 or 4 millimeters in diameter. The exact size doesn't matter. I didn't measure it. It just looks about right to me, and it's about this long. It's about three feet long. I'm going to put a little taper and a curly cue on each end, and then I'm going to use the torch to wrap this up. <laughs> 